Hello everybody, this is Stringing About Back to kick off round three for group G. And for round three of this group, we have this quartet of matches. Up first, we have got Lad going up against the Piva. Then we will see Ultra Lord taking a crack at the Blitz Guy Shy Guy. Then we have Drogon Targaryen the third taking a crack at Windless Moon. And as for our main event of this session, it is 2-0 Futuristic, taking on 1-1 one one Dino Tenka. But first, we have got three matches to go through, so let's get started with match number one. Right the ho then. In the red corner for the Mad Lad, we have got Eucentrosaurus. With terrain advantage. Actually, no, it won't have terrain advantage because the other guy got Stratosaurus in first. So, as per the rules, the terrain advantage will cancel the, itself out. So, no one will get terrain advantage here. Right, in the blue corner, representing the Pivar, we got Starachosaurus. Um, both of these guys, I think, have one and one starts so far. And yeah, both looking to go two and one in this tournament. Ooh, this is a tough one to call. I, I think Pivar with the third. With the Satio Kark matchup, has the upper hand, but you just don't know. Lad pulled off a really good, really fine victory against Drogon in round two. Can they back that up again? The Dino swing coming from Eucentrosaurus. A good start again from Lad. Defense boost it. Oh, that's a tie. Not a tie. That's a third tie. Oh, we're getting some tie spammage in this match. Oh, nope, there we go. And it's another hit from Lad. <clears throat> and I think it's a Thunder Driver, which should, could be curtains for Stragosaurus. Oh, look at that. Oh, he just survived though. <coughs> Water. Mm. Ooh, Stracosaurus does get the next hit on the board. Pivar finally striking back with a first shot of the match. Not much of a shot though, but a shot at least. Yeah, right now Stracosaurus is going down. So another fine start from Lad. To be fair to them, they have started all their matches in this tournament quite well. And obviously against Drogon they were able to sustain it and get the win, but against Tenka they kind of fell away. Right, coming in next for Pivar, we got the Jungasaurus. Bum, 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 bum. That's right, Pivar lost the Futuristic in the first round, didn't they? And I think they beat Moon? I mean, well, everyone's beat Moon so far, it's 0 and 2. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually been a while since I've recorded tournament videos, about a week or so, so I'm a bit rusty. Right, but that's a big shot coming in from the Piva. Is that going to be curtains for you, Centrosaurus? Yes, it is. And after everything said and done, we are level packing. Okie dokie, coming in next for Lad, we've got Polar Canthus, and wow, this Polar Canthus really put a shift in against Drogon. Like, worked its socks off. And uh, with the Satio Kark matchup in third, it's probably going to have to pull its weight again. If Lad wants this win. As for Pivar, if he can kill this thing quickly, golden opportunity to get a win. So I feel like this. This could be the matchup that decides who wins this match. Ooh, like a tie. I think the Jungasaurus is charge type, so ties will suit Pivar more than they'll suit Lad. And the Polacanthus is losing health, and that's going to be a big shot from Pivar. The Jungasaurus getting another hit on the board. Well, it was a slow start from Pivar, but they have turned things around. Oh, look at that! Almost killed it! Massive hit from a Jungasaurus. And yep, down goes the Polar Canthus. Right, 
coming in third for Lag, we have got Kakarodontosaurus. Now, it may have type advantage over Majungasaurus here, but it's going to have type disadvantage against the Satiosaurus when and if that thing if that thing comes in. So the key for Lad here is to kill this Majungasaurus quick. So he has as much health as possible left when he faces the, the Satiosaurus. Of course, we might not even get that scenario. So this Majungasaurus is looking beastly so far. Oh, that's exactly what Lad wants. A big fire cannon. This is going to do a massive amount of damage to Majungasaurus, and in fact will probably be lethal. <clears throat> Elemental power, which will help against the Satiosaurus as well, so bear that in mind. Right, coming in third for Piva, we have got Satiosaurus. Now, I do feel the odds are still in Pivar's favour with the type advantage, and he does have the slight health lead as well. And what's unique about this Satyosaurus is that it is willpower type, so ties are going to favour Pivar as well, as his moves will grow, get more attack with each tie. So, we'll get an interesting scenario, this. Ooh, but Lad is starting to get some hits on the board again. And that's going to be a big burning dash coming in. Elemental power is going to max up as well, which will help out massively. In fact, it will probably nullify... Yeah, it will probably nullify the uh, type advantage that Satyosaurus has, in all honesty. Ooh, but Satyosaurus gets a softening beam going. That's going to increase the damage that, that Kark takes during a tie. So Ties will definitely be Pivar's best friend. And in fact, I think even from that scenario, maybe three Ties might be lethal for Kark. So Lad's gotta be careful there. Oh, but get another hit on the board. Well, both our guys are gonna get losing bonus points out of this. It's been a back and forth bit of good contest, it says. Ooh, but Lad has he done it! Oh, he's done enough! It's the Mad Lad's victory! Kakarodontosaurus getting it done. Well done, you wee lad. And Pifa, well, they'll get a losing bonus point, but wow. Good good win for lad there. And they go two and one. Right, on to match number two. Right then, in the red corner, representing Ultra Lord, we have got an Alfred Guanadon. Ooh, this is a good field if you're shy, guys. You'll get terrain advantage with the Edmontonia. Terrain advantage certainly helped them out last time. Right, in the blue corner, representing Shy Guy, we've got the Blitz type Pachycephalosaurus. Shy Guy's sitting at 2 0 at the minute. A win here will put them top before Futuristic's match against Tenka. And well, Shy Guy's. Probably been the most one of the most exciting combatants in this tournament so far. Like a full blitz team, so you know what that means. It's gonna be two crits coming up. Well, will he get them? Oh, I got that one. Oh no, he didn't. It's a Dino Suffer. <laughs> well, it goes to Dino Suffer. The nemesis of the Blitz dinosaurs, that. Right, crit number two. Oh, he gets that one though, and there's no Dino Stuffer to stop it this time. Like, with Shy Guy's team, it's either going to be a super quick match, or, you know, it'll either go spectacularly well, or it'll go spectacularly wrong. Oh, okay, for oh, poop, 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 poop. I oh, damn it. I Oops. I hope that doesn't come back to haunt him. Okay, he got the poison off. I forgot his Dino Force. That's what I get for mumbling. Oh, no, no, no. Please don't do this to me. Please. Oh, the Pachy's Avalosaurus will probably be dead. Damn it. Well, you know the rescues in those moves. 
Right, coming in next for Ultra Lord, we got Super Madrugasaurus, Awake Mode on 3. Well, you might need the Awaken Mode, yeah? Well, you shouldn't... Shy Guy shouldn't be in the... <laughs> He's only in the league that botched the Dino Force. <laughs> but again, that's, that's the risk you have for using those moves. Okay, there we go. Patty Zephylosaurus bites the dust. And we are level packing. Right, coming in next for Shy Guy, we've got the Blitz type Sorolophus. Now, it will have type disadvantage against the Majungasaurus. However, its crit is not a grass move, so two Blitz crits from this Sorolophus could kill Majungasaurus quite easily. And Majungasaurus does have the Awaken mode. Will it survive? First things first, gotta survive these two crits. Oh, gets a crit of his own there. Good shot there from Ultra Lord, not falling for it this time. Okay, that's one. Oh, I didn't get that one though. Shy Guy gets the crit. Okay, so a one crit apiece. Ooh, but the Dino Illusion been triggered. That'll definitely help Ultra Lord. Right, that's twice. Oh, it's going to be Awakening Mode next. A good crit from Majungasaurus, and it's time for that Awakening Mode. Go on, Ultra Lord. A tie here would be most beneficial for Ultra Lord. Oh, and there is a tie. Oh, the Sorolphus didn't go down. And yes, I know someone did correct me by saying I used the wrong code for Sorolophus, and that's a massive, well, wasted hit, let's be honest. A massive wasted hit from the Jungasaurus. But Sorolophus is going down. Okay, coming in third for Shy Guy, we have got the Blitz type Edmontonia. Now, Edmontonia does have terrain advantages, so it will get the terrain hit first, and then it'll go for his two cracks. And I think, given Majungasaurus' HP will be halved, I think it still has a Dino Illusion, so this terrain hit will just get rid of Dino Illusion. And that's the only thing it's going to achieve. So Ultra Lord is still going to have an ultra slim lead. So right, there we go. Got rid of that uh, Dino Illusion. Right, now for the crits. Oh, the suspense, the suspense. What's it going to be? Is random number generator going to show us? Better pause it just to be on the safe side. Come on, random number generator. Don't do this to me now. The suspense is killing me and the viewers. Come on, mistress. Come on. Give us the number. Please. Ah, there we go. It's a free. So after everything said and done, it is a tie. Oh, and that'll do for Ultra Lords because it's a sonic blast. Okay, if Ultra Lord wins this, I'll, um, <laughs> I'll happily accept that my mistake did not cost him. <sighs> In fairness, given all the moves I've done, that's the first time I've botched it, so I'll take that. Oh, the crit, the blitz backfires as a crit. Look at this from Ultra Lord, and in fact, they probably get the bonus point win. Okay, they're not getting a bonus point win, but they still have a big lead in this contest. Right, coming in third for Ultra Lord, we have got the Deinonychus. One hit from this Deinonychus will do it for Ultra Lord. Sugoi! <laughs> Can they get that one hit? Oh, will Shy Guy pull off the comeback? And stay unbeaten in this tournament. Nope, there it is. It's Ultra Lord's victory. And to be honest, given how I botched the Dino Force earlier, at least it didn't cost him the match. So yeah, well done to Ultra Lord getting his second win of the tournament and Shy Guy tasting their first defeat. Interesting times in group. What group is this? I forgot. In group G. Group G. Now then. On to match number three. 
Ooh, the Alpha Arena. Okay, in the red corner for Drogon Targaryen the third, we have got a Giger. Well, Drogon suffered a rather disappointing loss in round two against Lad. Looking to bounce back here and get back on track in this tournament. But in the blue corner for Moon, we have got a Super Minus and well. Look, it hasn't been a good it hasn't been an easy start for the debut tent here. They they have had two very difficult matches. Not really getting many hits in those matches. I think both of them were bonus point losses. I think they were even 2-0 down in both of them. It's been a really tough start for them so far. And well, let's see what they get today. If you know they might they can pull off an upset year, then might ignite their tournament. And look at that for a start. And the Super Minus does have type advantage over Gaigas. And that's a pretty good start from Moon. Oops, tight. Another tight. A steady start from Moon so far. Oh, here it comes. The big crit from the Gaigas, the move block as well. That's going to remove all of Super Minus's moves. No flare sword though. Oh, there's another hit from Gygus. No, again, no flare sword. Interesting. Oh, the move block is still in effect. And oh, there goes Super Minus. A burning dash is going to make sure of it. So despite the tight advantage, Moon couldn't take advantage of it. Right, coming in next for Moon, we got Ankylosaurus. Well, is it going to be the same story for Moon again, or can they rally with this Anki and kill the Gygas? Right, that's a free. Okay, there's a hit. Badoosh! Guts hit there from Moon, and the nerf barrier to boot. A fine shot there from Ankylosaurus. Oh, that's a tie. That'll trigger the Quake Saber. Oh, it'll also trigger the Burning Dash, but it is Ankylosaurus getting the next hit, and, and it's a mole attack. And Gygus goes down. Well, you have to say, Moon is putting up much more of a fight in this match than he has done in the first two matches. So you have to give him credit for that. Right, coming in next to Drogon, we've got Eoraptor. And he's transformed into a Stegosaurus. Okay, that's not the worst thing in the world for Moon. Because it won't have, it won't have Sand Trap. It'll have Earthquake. But it will have re the recovery and the resilience of defense boost if it gets a hit. So. This is an interesting crossroads. And remember, the Ankylosaurus still has the Earth Barrier in effect. Oh, that's a massive crit. Okay, not really. <laughs> I was expecting a bit more. But that's a big shot there from Moon. And Drogon, well... Drogon, you know, he's having a flirting, flirting in the danger zone here, Drogon. Can they get a hit on the board? The tie. The blunder effect is going to remove the um, earth barrier, but I think it's already in effect. Well, we're about to find out. A much needed hit from Drogon, a defense boost and a light recovery to come. And yeah, the earth barrier from before stayed in effect despite the move being removed. Oh wow, that was a really good recovery. Good strike back by Drogon. And another hit. That's going to max up the defense boost. That'll definitely help. And Drogon retakes the lead. A back and forth contest. Up oh, tight. And that's an earthquake, and that's going to be all she wrote for Ankylosaurus. Boosh. Yeah, 
Yeah, it should be. I mean, I know Eoraptor has very low attack power, but this should still be lethal. Right, coming in third for Moon, we got Kakirodontosaurus. Now, the problem that Moon's going to have here is when Spinosaurus comes in, or if it comes in, it's going to hand Drogon a pretty decent advantage in this match. And they've already got the lead. Okay, there's a hit. That's encouraging. Oh, wow, look at that. Attack boost coming in as well. One. Oh, but the light recovery. That's not good. Oh, look at that. That's absurd. Alright. That's right, this match is almost over. Well, that's a big light recovery now, and that's not good for Moon. Although, the light recovery is gone now, so Drogon can't use it anymore. But you can still get a big hit like Earthquake. Well, it looked promising for Moon early on. And they did get some good hits and they did put up a fight. But Drogon really has turned the screw in this match. And it looks likely now that Drogon is going to get the bonus point. Oh, hang on. Kark is not beaten yet. Here comes the firebomb. Big hit from Moon. Oh, <laughs> maybe not. Oh, okay, yeah. I think this is going to be a bonus point win for Drogon. Wow, this Eeyore up the moves that really paying off. And yep, yeah, there it is. Massive win for Drogon there. Bouncing back after disappointment in round two in style. And well, as for Moon, they do slip to 0-3 in this tournament. It's three bonus point defeats. It's really not looking good for them. Unfortunately. But for Drogon, well, they get back the winning ways. Another bonus point win. And yeah, let's move on to our main event of this session, shall we? Which should be a cracker. Ooh. Right, in the red corner for Futuristic, we got Super Baryonyx. Awaken mode on three. And this is a good field if you're Futuristic. This side chain yet will have to earn advantage in this match. Could that be a deciding factor? Right, in the blue corner for Dino Tanker, we have got Simo Tyrannus. Well, it's going to have tight disadvantage against the Barry, but one weapon it does have that could help is Heat Eruption and this charge type. So ties will definitely favour Tanker. So if you can get some ties going, get some Heat Eruptions, you know, it's not all doom and gloom, but yeah, you'd have to say, especially with this terrain field, futuristic really does have the upper hand now. Okay, there's a tie. And well, futuristic has been very dominant in their matches so far. I think in both of them, they've been 2-0 up. And Baryonyx will be in contention for the most knockouts by a single dinosaur. But, so far, this has been a steady start from Tenka. But remember, the Barry does have the Awaken mode to count upon if it needs it. And, oh, there it is. A big shot. And look at that. It's two hits to one in tank Tenka's favour. But we are level packing. That's the type of advantage for you. Ooh, that's a tie. Oh, it's a heat eruption! And I think for the first time in this tournament, Futuristic fails to get the hit with the Awaken mode. That could be a massive heat eruption from Tanker. 
And yeah, there's the volcano burst effect. It's not going to be lethal, but look at that! This Simon Turan is really putting up a good fight. But it is the Baryonyx that does give Futuristic the lead with the Futaba Cannon. But you know what? It took Baryonyx to the brink, so I think that's a good victory there for Tenka. Right, coming in next for Tenka, we got Megalosaurus. Now, if Megalosaurus is probably going to have to do a fair bit of work here if Tenka wants this win. It's got the gig gigantic fall. It definitely has the hard-hitting power of the secret dinosaur. But can it... Well, it just needs a tie to finish off the Barry for then Cytrania to come in with a terrain advantage. Okay, there it is. Well, the tie bomb's going to be wasted, but the hit from Tenga is going to ensure that the Baryonyx goes down and Futuristic will not be 2-0 up. But they will get the next hit, courtesy of the terrain advantage, thanks to this Super Cytrania. Okay, it's going to be a rock hit, so defense boost is going to activate. We might see Earth Barrier, we might see Giga Rock Hammer as well. So Futuristic will be in the lead. But, you know, Tenka's not out of it. It's not much of a lead. Badoosh. Defense boost there. Okay, no Earth Barrier or Giga Rock Hammer. Chance missed there, he thinks. Oh, Megalosaurus gets the next hit. A tie bomb coming in as well. Ties are really causing futuristic problems in this matchup. Okay, that's a tap. Well, there's the tie. The tie bomb will go off. And another hit from Megalosaurus. This has been a solid showing from Tanker so far. Really causing futuristic loads of problems. But here it comes, the Awaken Mode. And one hit here can definitely swing the match in Futuristic's favour. Oh, and they get the hit! I don't think it's going to be lethal. It might be lethal to Gigarok. Okay, here we go. Defense boost. It's going to get something. And it's Giga Rock Hammer. Megalosaurus goes down. And Futuristic is going to be 2-1 up. Right, coming in third for Dino Tanker, we've got Super Triceratops. Well, despite being in a losing position, I think this has been a pretty solid performance from Tanker so far. But Futuristic has got those big hits in. And I think that's why they got the lead. But despite the type disadvantage, I think one hit from this trike will... Yeah, well, it definitely kill the Cychania. Ooh, but can it get that hit? There's a hit there from Futuristic. What's this? It's an Earth Barrier. Right, that's one. Okay, there's a hit, and that should be lethal. I say should. Oh, really? Okay, that's twice. Okay, but well, this hit will be lethal. And well, for the first time in this tournament, Futuristic's down to their third dino. And as you can see, that third dino is Ace Dino Tector. Hmm, we're at an interesting crossroads in this main event. Because Tenka has the Awaken Mode to use. And if it gets and if they get the hit with the Awaken Mode, I think it will be game over for Futuristic here. But Futuristic has the Dino Tector. I don't think we're gonna see Dino Tector though, unless we get like a button ton of ties. Okay, there's a tie. And yes, I know I clicked scissors instead of paper, but it's a tie anyway, so it doesn't matter. Right, this time I'll click paper. And that's another tie. Oh my god, it's going to be tie spam, isn't it? 
Oh, Futuristic gets the next hit. But it is awakening time for the Triceratops. Can they get this hit? Oh, they can! Massive hit from Tank. It's not going to be lethal, though, but look at that! That's the losing bonus points secured, but can Tanker get the victory? Oh, they can! That's going to do it! Thunder Driver is going to end Futuristic's winning start, and it's going to give Dino Tanker the win. And, well, over the course of the match, you would probably say Tanker deserves it. But Futuristic will get a losing bonus point out of this contest, but they are tasting defeat for the first time in this tournament. And you have to say, that's a fine performance from Dino Tanker to get the win. And oh, it inserted another coin. But yep, yeah, that's gonna conclude That's gonna conclude our matches for this session, so I'll have a look at the table and we can end this session. Well, you have to say, Group G has really opened up. We have Futuristic and Drogon level on points at 9, nothing to separate these two, honestly. Then we have Ultralord on 7 points. Shy Guy, Tenka and Lad on 6 points, no again, nothing to separate them. And then we have the Pivar on getting those two losing bonus points, and poor old Moon still yet to get off the mark in this tournament. Round 4 is going to be massive for these two. Actually, well they actually, yeah they actually don't play each other in Round 4, I was, I was double checking. But yeah, round four is going to be massive for these two if they want to keep their, their hopes of qualifying from the group stage alive. So far, Group G and Group C, the only two groups that we don't have someone who won three out of three. So they are really crazy groups. And Group G, really open now, really open. Anyone could win it at this point. But yeah, that's going to end this session here. So I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, ta-ta. Mm -hmm.